offer up a black man to blame. You can get away with anything in America. Oh, the power structure promotes fear. They want the whole world, well, at least people in America, to, to be fearful of something. When they want black people to have fear, we get more stories about racism. When they want white people to have fear, we get more stories about crime, and especially black crime. So this documentary, what I want to do with this documentary that I'm getting ready to react to or analyze, I'm going to show you little subtle things that the media has been doing for years and not only stereotyping people, but putting fear into people. And we know the media has agenda because the police, for example, kills more white people. We know this. More white people get killed by the police every year. But how many of those stories become mainstream stories? It only becomes a mainstream story when a white cop kills a black citizen. Now, I'm going to analyze this documentary. It's called California Crime Wave. It's about the rising crime in California. We get all these stories about crime rising, but for the last two decades in California and around the whole country, crime was going down. And we didn't get a lot of mainstream stories about how crime went down because that wouldn't put fear in people. We start getting documentaries and stories about crime when crime is going up. So, and one of the things about this documentary, before I get into all the little subtle tricks, they did, because I got a list of tricks that I'm gonna go down. And you tell me if you noticed the tricks too, if you've seen this documentary. But one of the things about this documentary, it had no credibility. And one reason why it had no credibility is because of this, this sheriff right here, he was the one that was profiled in the documentary. Now, his name is Alex Villanueva. And he is the sheriff of Los Angeles County. And the thing about it is, his department is riddled with scandal. With scandal. Scandal after scandal. But yet, here he is in this documentary speaking like this. I have, for every four detectives, I only have three. Which means they have to carry the workload of the other ones is missing. That is a consequence of defunding. So now he want to talk about how defunding the police has affected uh, crime. But what happened before the police was defunded? Two of his detectives involved in a gun scheme scandal. With this gun shop owner, the one in the middle, right next to the sheriff. The guy even hosted a fundraiser event for the sheriff. Two Los Angeles County sheriffs, these two women right here, was part of a gun scheme. You go look it up, there's their names right there. They was part of a gun scheme. Now I'm not gonna go into the details of the, all this because this is really about the documentary, but, and he wanna talk about defunding the police, but yet one of his detectives, the one on the right, let me see, let me see, the one on the right, she was a part of costing the county millions of dollars has been in the news before in 2017 while she was patrol training robles was responding to a shots fired call when she ran a red light without turning on her siren and caused a chain collision crash two boys were killed several others injured the da declined to file criminal charges against robles but the county paid more than 22 million dollars to settle the lawsuit and nobody says anything he's not gonna say anything about his bad cops but not only that, here's another good reason why this sheriff shouldn't have even been interviewed in this documentary about crime. His department just has too many scandals. They got gang bangers in his department. And you're going to interview this sheriff? So of all the sheriffs in California, you're going to take this sheriff to interview, to profile? Gangs of deputies inside the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Sheriff's deputy gang that has branded its members the executioners. The crackdown on deputies who are members of cliques or gangs inside the Sheriff's Department. How do they identify themselves? With the tattoo. Now, these are people who took an oath and they wonder why people feel the way they do about the police. It's not just about the murders that they commit and the everyday harassment. Bad cops is doing, and, and, and let me say this, I'm not anti-cop. 
we need to police. I know this. But we need good police officers. Why they didn't say anything? Any of these cops, sheriffs, why they never said anything about this gang members, not just the gang members uh, in the Los Angeles County sheriffs, but all around the country called the blue, a thin blue line. That's a gang. This is a gang flag. Look how they do the American flag, the flag they supposed to love so much. But they don't want to talk about that. But with that said, so now let me get into some of the tricks that was in this documentary. And you guys tell me if you see some of this stuff. See this man right here? This man was a victim of a crime at his house. This man right here owns a store. He was a victim of a crime. Now, this is something the media does all the time. Anytime they're doing crime stories, they rarely show black victims in the same, in the same circumstances as other citizens. They'll show black victims when racial, when there's a racial component or if it's a black on black crime. Here's another thing they don't do. They rarely show black experts. They probably interviewed about 12 experts from various agencies. Not one black person got interviewed, not one journalist, not one public defender, not one, politi not one politician. Not one security prevention person. Not one person of all these experts that you're seeing on the screen right now was a black person. You're telling me in the whole state of California you couldn't find something? Like give us the little token security, the little token prison guard, a, a probation officer. Here's another thing they did in this documentary. And this happens a lot in the news media. This right here. Whenever they're showing groups of people. And this is done subtly. But they're showing the white people just living everyday lives. Walking their dogs. Jogging. Having picnics. Just living a nice normal life. Being with their family. Playing with the Frisbees. This is what you see. When they show non-black people, just regular old people just living a regular old normal life, not bothering anybody. But, but when they start showing the black people in groups, they were either in a group in jail or prison or in urban decay. Even though we come, into, we come in a variety of economic status. Regardless of the statistics, the manipulation of statistics that you hear about. But when they show black people, look what they do. They show this. Urban DK. Where everybody look like they're either homeless or on drugs. And let me explain it to you and break it down to you. Another thing they do is like you can see these clips that they have in this documentary. These are selected clips. Somebody in the uh, editing room decided to, what clips they were, they were gonna pick and where they go. So, excuse me. Now, when they show the criminals, they show the white criminals already in handcuffs. With the hoodies on, but you can kind of you can tell they're white. But they show them walking around, not really doing crime. They just show him punching in numbers with a mask. He could be wearing that mask for COVID reasons. He could have lost his key. They do not actually show them doing crime. But when they show the black people, they show them actually doing crime, walking out of stores, in the stores taking stuff running out of stores and they show this they show the black people where you can tell right before they start showing a lot of violent criminals who are doing uh, violent crimes car break-ins drive-by robberies and all these things you can't tell what color these people are but because they just showed you all these black people doing the crime you, it's a perception that these are black people as well too. It's connected subconsciously. Whether they black or not. 
So most people think, uh oh, these are black people doing crime. Another trick they did. I'm trying to be uh <laughs> trying to do this video right. So now they're talking about prison overcrowded in this segment and the three strikes law, right? So they show this guy right here. This is a white guy. They show him, and then this is what happens. Busted for paying for a small package of donuts. Now, as you heard, he could be spending the rest of his life in prison. I mean, if you put every... So now they show you this white guy who could be spending the rest of his life in prison for a pack of donuts. Which this is to invoke sympathy. They just profiled him. He's a three strike guy, but on his third strike, it's about some donuts to provoke empathy. I mean, sympathy. So, but now when they profile a black guy in the same circumstances who either got out of prison because it was overcrowded, this is what they do. Authorities are finding out more about the mass shooting in Sacramento, California this past weekend. One of the suspects was released from jail just weeks before the shooting despite a 10 year sentence. They showed you that, they showed you the white, this brother right here, doing a violent crime, a shooting. Where they just showed you the white guy getting arrested for donuts. We don't get into any background, but these are the little subtle things they do. And then when they finally do get to some experts, some black experts, black experts, it's this brother right here. It's two black guys getting interviewed. And they was on the screen less than five minutes, but throughout the whole documentary, repeatedly showed us the white experts. But now these guys come in, but what, this guy's a drug counselor right here. And then they show you an ex-drug addict they spoke with. And they connect these two to drugs by their questioning. And look how they connected with the questions. Committing crime and stay sober. Are these thefts and crime that are happening, are they out of poverty or are they out of drug addiction and other reasons? How would he know? He don't know every criminal. But they they connecting the black people to drugs, right? And matter of fact, see this guy is the one who did the documentary. Okay, you know what I'm starting? I'm starting to notice about the power structure. They starting to get other minorities to do their dirty work, like they did in California prisons. So look how he's questioning this guy. It's a combination of all of it. Some of it is out of kind of like how I grew up. It's been taught in your home. Yeah, he don't know why crime is going on in California, but they connected it. And what's sad about it, here's the thing about it. This is what's sad right here. So now they connected drug use to black people. Throughout this whole documentary, we never heard about drugs until they started talking to the black people. And then they're gonna to try to connect the crack era into the rise of crime today. From the 80s to the early 2000s, California's crime rate was reaching an all-time high. Really, homicides, they dipped a bit in the late 80s, but we then they rose significantly. And why are you talking about the crack era from the 80s? And I'm not saying there are not still crack users, but crime was down for two decades. And people are hooked on all kinds of drugs. So we know today most of the drugs being used is either meth or fentanyl. And most of those users, in, especially in California, are non-black people. But they don't interview any other people when it comes to drugs, any other drug addicts and drug users throughout this whole, throughout this whole documentary. Didn't start talking about the drugs until they start talking to the black people. Why are you bringing up a, a, a era 
from 40 years ago when we all know what, which drugs today are causing the most damage. So you sit there, you connect the crime to drug use, then you connect the drugs to black people. Now, some of you guys may not see it that way, but that's how I see it. And then they're going to go into all the Black Lives Matter stuff linking rising crime to all the protesting when most of the protesting was peaceful and they don't even go over some of the, the role the police played in the protest because a lot of times the police officers like especially like in the rodney king thing police officers actually went on the radio and said we're not arresting anyone so a lot of times when these uh protesting is going on there's a certain element that no the police is not going to do anything because they've, they've said they're not going to do anything. Because they want chaos to feel needed. Whenever the negative feelings about the police rise. So what happens is. It's almost like the police say, well, forget it, man. Let's just take our ball and go home. Let's wait till they really need us. Like they need a big story. So people would know they're needed. And we know the police is needed. We just need good police. But this documentary was trying to send a subliminal message that the reason crime is rising in California or the reason why California is failing is because black people and drug use. And we should have sympathy for the police because they're handcuffed by policies and laws. And we all know that's bullshit. Just do, do better. Be a better cop. And people wouldn't feel the way they feel about cops. And also in the documentary, they had cops talking about low morale and how, how officers are quitting. Good. All the bad cops should quit. Because all you do is protect the rich and serve the poor ass whoopings. And I'm talking about the bad cops. Okay, this is the end of the video. Uh, you guys, please click and subscribe. And until the next one, peace. You got the benefit of being a white dude. No one ever suspects shit when it's a white dude.